and one go. Hey, what's up? I'm Chloe Onyx. Welcome to Lifestyle Essentials, where we talk about everything that's essential to your life, beauty, health, and fitness. We're doing this show because we feel there's a lot of things that people need to know, like homeopathic and natural ways to apply beauty, health, and fitness to your life. So you can have a longer, uh, better filled life. Um, so again, I'm your host, Chloe Onyx, and this is my lovely co-host. You want to introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. I am Erica. I'm your beauty blogger for things fashion, makeup, hair, and DIY. All right, so let's jump right into the beauty DIY of the day. What do you have for us, Miss Erica? All right, so for today's DIY, it's going to be a homemade lip scrub. These scrubs are great, especially in the winter time, because that's usually when your lips are dry, cracked, peeling, or just plain old crusty. And <laughs> you know, you know those people I'm talking about too. You know I do. About. I feel right. like this is more for the guys than the women. And please note, this show is for both guys and for girls because I know that when we say beauty, a lot of men at home think, oh, that's not for me. That's, right. you know, for my girlfriend. But we have some very cool stuff, um, especially beauty-wise, like mm -hmm. what you're about to tell us. Because so everybody has skin. Exactly. You know, and everybody has lips. Exactly. So I think this definitely counters for it, for men and women, for sure. Exactly. But I know in the wintertime, especially, like right Right now it's January and California we're lucky enough to have sunsets and people go to the beach and it's warm yeah everywhere else around the country it's snowing my friend was recently in Colorado she sent me a picture and it was just like snowing her flight was delayed because of the snow like we take it for granted here we don't realize everywhere else people are really like in the snow and it's super cold and they're going through all these issues yeah so I think it's great to mention how to do a DIY scrub for your lips because um, it's very common in the winter time and it's still going on right now even though we don't feel it yeah. So for this scrub, it's very easy. And the great thing about this is you can use the products that you have in your home, in your kitchen. You don't have to run out and buy anything. You can use what you have. So this scrub is contains olive oil, honey, cinnamon, sugar, and vanilla extract. So the sugar that I, I like to use is white sugar. And the reason I like to use that is because the white sugar is actually finer, so it makes for a more gentler scrub. Mm. Um, brown sugar is very common for scrubs as well, but it actually is better to use as a body scrub because brown sugar is actually thicker and it's a little more coarser, it's so it might coarse. be a little rougher on your skin, it especially scratches. if you have sensitive skin. So I definitely recommend using white sugar for anything related to your face um, mm. and your lips. So that's why I like using white sugar. And then olive oil actually acts as a natural conditioner. It conditions your lips and it helps to keep them from drying out and honey is a great hydrator and cinnamon actually acts as a natural lip plumper so you'll notice by putting the cinnamon in and after you do your lip scrub and applying it that you're going to feel a natural plumper pout on your lips and then I like to use vanilla just to add a little extra flavor and scent to it as well and the great thing about these scrubs is that there's so many you can make you can make a peppermint DIY lip scrub you can make some using cranberries dried nuts like there's such a variety that you can make there's so many different variations of them, so you can make them depending on your preference and what you like and mm -hmm. all kinds of scrubs. And these are also great because you can make the scrub, put it in a little jar, give them to your friends mm -hmm. for gifts, for birthday presents, for Christmas, and you can also put them in your bag for your for traveling, and mm -hmm. you can fit in your travel size bag. Like I had a little small container of them, fits right into my purse or travel bag. And if you're flying somewhere for the winter time, you can just, when you get to your hotel or go home, so, it's very easy. You just apply it to your lips, leave it on for about five minutes applying it, and then you just rinse it off. So in the winter, how often should you do this? Well, I think it depends on how extreme um, chapped your lips are and mm -hmm. how much of an issue it is for you. But I think for maintenance, I would do at least like twice a week in the wintertime if you have chapped lips. Definitely it's for maintenance. And what about the rest of the year? Would it be the same or a little less because it's warmer, your skin isn't going through as much as when it's the, the cold, harsh winter time? I think if you overall during the spring and summer, if your lips aren't tend to dry out and they're not gonna get chapped and your lips are naturally soft and smooth during the rest of the year there might not even be a need to do it mm. and if you do want to do it then of course you can do it maybe once a month maybe once a week it really depends on you and your preference like for me I honestly don't really need to do it except for winter time I naturally have drier skin my hands get drier my face is drier I actually don't have oily skin I have more drier skin okay. but it's mostly in the winter time everywhere else during the year my skin's actually normal I don't really have that issue so someone like me I wouldn't feel the need to be doing it during the summertime especially in the summer when it's hot yeah. but it's preference because some people's body reacts differently and some people do get dry chapped lips 
all year round. Mm -hmm. And so if that's you, then of course you should definitely do it maybe once a week. So I'm gonna just go here and throw this out too. I mean, I know it's good for lips and all, but um, I mean, it seems to be just good universally. So what, could I turn that into a body scrub if I really, really wanted to? Definitely. You can definitely use it as a body scrub. And like I said, if you use brown sugar, it actually will make a better scrub because it is rougher. So it's gonna give you a better exfoliation. You can make a body scrub, like this is a lip scrub. So yeah. you can use, you know, white sugar is more gentle for you, but you can make a homemade body scrub using the exact same ingredients, just use brown sugar. So it's very versatile. Very like versatile. That. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Very good. All right. So um, I guess you can find this at blackhollywood.com. There are pictures and maybe even a video that mm -hmm. have um, how to make this lip scrub at home, um, the few easy steps that it takes. So let's move right into our tip of the day. And I'm going to go ahead and kick this off with my tip of the day. I like to believe in my own, you know, little way that I'm a bit of a health connoisseur just because I'm very into the homeopathic and all natural ways to stay healthy. Um, and for me, my tip of the day is drinking lots of tea. Uh, tea, you should be drinking about two to three times a day, depending on what you want to drink tea for, whether it's just to stay um, healthy as far as, you know, just something warm that keeps you warm in the winter. It also helps with like prevention of heart attack, cancer. Some people might be into like weight loss, um, keeps you regular. Like all those things are really, really great with tea. And I actually have a little pop quiz for you, Erica. Um, there are many different teas and I'm gonna name a few and I want you to tell me which one really isn't tea. And you guys can play along at home too um, and write down which tea do you think is really not tea. So um, I was doing my own research just because I drink so much much tea and I didn't really know this and I just said huh let me check this I think I was reading something and I came across that a certain tea isn't tea so there's what we like to drink or we find in our super supermarkets regularly are black tea green tea white tea oolong tea and herbal tea so one of those teas is not really tea if you can guess this at home please send it in mm -hmm. type it in you know let us know what you think but I want to hear you right now Erica which tea do you think is really not tea I'm pretty confident that it's herbal tea. You're very, very good. And do you know why? I don't know why. Okay. I know it's herbal. <laughs> so black, green, white, and oolong are the only teas that are really teas that come from a tea leaf on a tea tree. I, mm. I don't know if that said that. <laughs> like a little like. That sounded like a little rhyme. A right little there. rhyme, yeah, right? I like that. Um, herbal tea is not really tea because it doesn't come from a tea leaf on a tree. It's like normally composed of like different herbs. So whether you have cinnamon or mulberry bark or or nutmeg or some type of herb, any any kind of herb, but that's what makes herbal tea. So it's not really a leaf. And even though, like, I was trying to find for you guys so I can show you, like, different examples of what tea is, oolong tea and white tea are very rare. They're, like, um, known as ch Chinese specialty tea, so you don't see them all the time. And we normally drink black or herbal or green tea. But I would say what's most important about drinking tea is making sure that it's really tea, that it comes from a tea leaf and that it's not mixed with a bunch of preservatives and other things. Because now, as we know, uh, green tea is really good for weight loss. It's mm -hmm. really good for keeping you, your body just well balanced. And we see a whole lot of commercial uh, products with green tea, and it's just, it's not the real deal. Mm. But um, tea is really good aside from, you know, reducing heart attack. It's it's really good to, for, to get rid of free radicals, and it's really, really good um, if you have, like, to prevent any kind of cancers. Mm. So drink your tea. And most importantly, like, if I'm hungry and I can't reach, you know, get to a good hot meal, I have hot tea and I feel just as full, and it's, like, warm. It gets rid of any gas in your system. So tea is really, really good, and it's, and it's really cheap. So mm. my tip of the day is drink lots of tea, at least two to three uh, cups a day. Green tea is really good for all those dynamics as far as, like, free radicals, getting rid of those. Um, and more importantly, oh, I found this tip, too. Um, um, which is becoming a really big problem, especially here in America, is type 2 diabetes. Green tea helps uh, type 2 diabetics better process their sugar. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's huge for someone who has to have, you know, stick themselves all the time yeah. and you just have to watch your sugar all the time. So drink lots of tea and be easy on the sugar, that's even though I like a little sugar from time to time yeah. in my tea. But So if you wanted to find or use white or oolong tea, where could you find that? Um, I would say go to like a specialty supermarket, I, not to promote here, but I like to go to like a Whole Foods or somewhere that just has um, organic or natural stuff. 
Um, and you can even go to like a, a local, depending on where you are, because I'm from New York and we have a bunch of those like little stands on the corner, like fruit and vegetable stands, like all over New York that have a lot of all natural herbal stuff. So just really just do your research, look it up, but you can find pretty much any kind of pure tea at your at your regular supermarket. It might not be oolong or white tea, because mm-hmm. I had to search far and wide to find some white tea yeah. quite recently, to be honest. But your black tea and your green tea are very popular. So as long as you're getting it, you know, read the back of the box. It has to say tea leaf, like mm-hmm. green tea leaf. And then you know it's the real deal as opposed to like, you know, not to throw anyone under the bus, but like Lipton's to go green tea with 59 ingredients is not the way to go. So. Yeah, because when I go to the grocery store and I'm looking for green tea, there's so many variations of green tea that I literally am just confused and I don't know which one to get. To and get. then I get one hoping that this is really the real deal. Yeah. And then there's been times I literally bought the ones that were the actual leaf one. Mm-hmm. I go home and I'm like, I don't even know how to use how this. To use the- <laughs> you know, but you I'm like, get, I don't like, know which one get to get. With it. Like you yeah. take the tea leaves and like put it in a napkin and like dip it yeah. real quick before it. Like, so much work. Oh my God, yeah, no, time. no, no. If you're gonna do le- loose tea leaves, they normally have these, um, these kind of like little metal ball things, and you put um, the tea in it, and you kind of close it up and steep it in your cup. Mm-hmm. You can find them at like a world market or just you know even like a basic Target. You just gotta look for it and ask for it, okay. because it is healthier than the actual bags that we get in, um, you know, like a box of twenty tea bags and the bags are made of like some bleached cotton right. from God knows where. So it is better to have loose tea leaves. But if you know, but I mean, it's all the same. If you do buy a box of tea bags with the tea right, already right, in it, right. that's, that's cool too. It's just really, you know, like what's your speed? So what if there's like some green tea that you want to purchase and it says green tea with like honey or green tea mixed with peppermint? Like, that's is that, great. Okay. Like, and I mean, green tea has a very, um, interesting taste i believe myself like i don't really like the taste of green tea yeah. so i always look for something that's mixed with herb mm-hmm. but the difference in just a herbal tea and a real green tea is that it's actual green tea leaves in it but you can definitely get green tea with you know added cinnamon for flavor or vanilla or whatever else but just make sure that it's, there is actually green tea leaves in there or you know like what's the point <laughs> you know yeah. you'll be drinking herbal tea which really isn't even tea you know, but yeah. it tastes it tastes great. I can't even front yeah. it. It tastes great. But yeah, so let's move along to our four one one. What's the four one one of the day? I think Erica, you have a great beauty four one one for us. Yeah, so for today's beauty tip, it's going to be on keeping your hair moisturized. Again, I'm coming back to wintertime because that's the season that it is right now. And this is something that we all struggle with, especially African American women. Our hair is three times drier than Uh, everyone else's hair. So that means we have to do three times the amount of work, three times the amount of product sometimes, just a lot more we have to do to our hair to keep it moisturized. And I know with curly hair, there's different types of curly hair. But at the end of the day, curly hair is naturally dry. So what you want to do is constantly keeping your hair moisturized. So first things that you can do is getting a moisture-rich conditioner. Conditioning your hair is very important to keep your hair hydrated. You definitely should use conditioner, especially natural conditioners are better for your hair. It's not going to have sulfates and parabens in it. But definitely using a deep conditioning treatment, um, conditioning mask, and of course you can use oils to do that as well. But definitely using a conditioner that's rich rich to moisturize your hair is very important. And also something else you can do is creating something that's called the lock method. It's something new that I'm experimenting with. And basically it consists of using a liquid, an oil, and a cream or a butter. And what that does, by using each one, starting off with the liquid, then using an oil, and then using a cream or butter, that helps to lock in the moisture in your hair by using those three products in conjunction with each other. It's going to help keep your hair moisturized and lock in the moisture that's currently in your hair. The next thing you can do is using heavy sealants like oil, like castor oil, olive oil, coconut oil. Those are great for your hair. Also using protective hairstyles. You can put those oils in your hair, put your hair up in a bun, put your hair in a braid. Those are protective hairstyles and you're doing that while you have oil in your hair so you're keeping your hair hydrated and moisturized by also protecting it and with those heavy sealants in your hair so those are also great to do something else that you can do is also when you're sleep people don't really realize this but you do lose moisture in your hair when you're sleeping so something that you can do is wrap your hair up in a silk bonnet a silk scarf and even using a satin case 
a satin case pillowcase or satin pillowcase. Ooh. Using that as well actually is really good for your hair because if you notice, if you're using like a cotton pillowcase and you're rubbing against it all night, all that friction is rubbing against your hair. And you know, for our hair naturally, it breaks more easily, especially because Af African American women tend to use a lot of products with chemicals and um, flatten ironing our hair and a lot of different stuff in our hair. So our hair tends to naturally be more easily for breakage anyways and split ends and all that. So yeah. if your hair is constantly rubbing up against something, it's causing friction and your hair is going to be more bound to break off and you're going to lose that extra moisture in your hair. So by using a satin pillowcase, that's actually really going to help your hair not lose as much moisture while you're sleeping. And the last thing that you can do as well is making sure that you use a shampoo that doesn't contain any kind of harsh chemicals in it, as well as using products that don't contain alcohol. Alcohol is a natural drying substance. Like if you put that on your on your skin, a lot of acne products contain alcohol in it to dry your skin out. Like if you have a pimple and you pop it, people put alcohol on it to help dry it out. Mm. Well, that's the same thing for your hair. If you have a product that has alcohol in it, it's gonna dry your hair. Yeah. So that's the one thing I make sure that I look for in a product. Even if it's not a natural product, I make sure that the ingredient is not alcohol because I know my hair will dry out. Yeah. And there's some products I actually used growing up as a kid that now I'm looking back at it and I'm like, wow, this product actually didn't, it wasn't good for me because it had alcohol in it. And yeah. using it now, I see how my hair is dried out. So, mm. you know, and, I, and as a kid, I really didn't know what I was doing with my hair anyways. So I think that that's something that you definitely can do to keep your hair moisturized. Okay, very, very good. Well, let's move right into my favorite part, which is the Health 411 <laughs> of the day. And we have a very interesting video that I found and like my jaw dropped when I saw this video. And I was like, oh my God, this is something we have to talk about on the show because I think it's very controversial. And some people might be opposed to it. Some people might think it's great because of... Um, I think we're really big here in America on getting things cheaper um, um, for like is a is a bargain. You know what I mean? Like yeah, if it's cheaper, it's a sure. bargain. If it's bigger, that means it's better. Right. And I feel like we need to steer away from that because you know it's that really isn't the truth. Like just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's gonna fit you, or doesn't mean that it's gonna be right for you. And just because it's cheaper doesn't mean that. It, in the end, it'll be the best, especially health-wise for you. So yeah, this is true. the video I found, and I, I just want to hear what you have to say. And I want everyone at home to definitely comment on this because I'm very opposed to what I saw in this in this video. But I feel like it could be the next wave, unfortunately. Um, but I hope that people will be smart enough to realize that this it, this shouldn't be the next wave, and that we need to just like nip this in the bud, you know, before it it takes over because we could definitely be at risk with our health due to uh, what I've seen here. So can we start this video clip and, and give everybody a little surprise from what I've learned about this? Mm, interesting. Can you hear it? I can't hear it, guys. Can you guys hear it? And it might be a little commercial clip that happens before it actually plays. I'm not sure. Because <coughs> this isn't it, but it might be like a commercial piece Mostly that came reflected before. people leaving the yeah. workforce. A reminder, over a third of the unemployed in this country... There was is disappointment the, um, in the new jobs numbers that came out today. Employers hired the fewest workers in almost three years last month, just 74,000. The unusual yeah, cold weather may have been a factor in this. And while unemployment dropped to 6.7 percent, the lowest in more than five years, the decline mostly reflected people leaving the workforce. Is it going to play? Keep going. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a little background on what it is since I don't know why the, the right video didn't pop up. But what this video was about is supermarkets. They're coming out with these new supermarkets that will only sell expired food. 
Are you serious? I swear to God. And it's it's really an important <laughs> video because it tells, it's, it's something, yeah, here it is. Store to sell only expired food. It's a different type of grocery store that will sell recently expired food. Wait, go back up, please, guys. Um, recently expired food at a deeply discounted price and that's actually what the video goes into and they have uh, a, a new supermarket that it's kind of like a test supermarket and it talks about um, you know they show people in the store buying it it's something that's a brand new concept it's a scary concept to me and just because I know the importance of fresh food and when you get your stuff from a supermarket in the first place, you know, it's already four and five days old because it had to travel from Mexico or from Europe or from wherever it's coming from. Luckily, if it's if it comes from America, you know, like we'll be lucky if it comes from America. So, you know, I just I when I saw this, I was just very, very shocked. Like is like, where are we going? Like, what are we doing? Like, that's. I mean, I'm I'm totally opposed to it because I believe if you can go to a farmer's market, go. If you can go to a supermarket that, that prides itself on fresh, new, like like barely a day or two old, like go. But the thought of a supermarket that only sells expired food, because we do waste here in America, and that becomes the big issue of we're wasting so much food. But it's like, you know, then we, there needs to be more surveys done on spending, on what people spend their money on food-wise and how often. Like, all those things need to be done and maybe bringing in less into the supermarkets as opposed to just saying, okay, all this food's expired, but it's still good. So let's just start a supermarket to sell all that bad food, and then you, the Americans, at risk of getting sick if you eat this bad food exactly. because you decide to by it. so what do you right. think erica <laughs> that honestly like mind boggles me because i'm a freak when it comes to expired stuff like mm. i if anything's expired like i constantly check the expiration dates it could be one day old i will throw it out like yeah. i do not like expired stuff so for a store to actually go out their way to sell expired food it's just like i don't even understand the concept behind that because it's expired for a reason. If you think about it, why is it expired? Why do these things have expirations on it? It's because there comes a point when it's no longer any good. Exactly. And if it's not good anymore, that can possibly be health hazardous, depending on what it is. Like for cheese, you know, or for eggs or certain yeah. things that, that are dairy, you know, it's I not good I think right thing. now it's going to mm -hmm. pop up. Oh, no? Okay. no? okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I think, you know, like dairy products, you know, it's not, and especially when it comes to children, I feel like children's immune systems are weaker than a grown-ups, and kids tend to get sick a lot. You know, my four-year-old, you know, she gets sick, sick more often than I know I have in probably most of my life of living. Yeah. So, you know, giving your, your children expired food, depending on what it is, and what if bacteria starts to grow? When I was a kid, we did this thing in science class where we had a Petri dish, and we put, you know, we touched a bunch of different stuff in there, and you just saw, like, over time, bacteria growing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, expired food, bacteria eventually will grow in that, you know, and even if it starts small, but eventually it will get bigger. And also, stuff like bread. If I buy, buy bread at the store, it's going to expire in probably a week. Exactly. So if I'm already buying something expired, I'm not going to eat a whole, like, like roll of bread That's expired. In, uh, in two days, and I you mean, know? They're trying to market it where it's like, you know, that food is a little bit is good for you, no matter, uh, here, they finally got it up. Mm -hmm. That food is, is still good when it leaves the shelves. You know, we just, we're so crazy here in America about, you know, canned foods and all this stuff. But they're trying to sell produce, too. Like, if you, um, once it comes up, you'll see, like, they have a whole produce section. And that, to me, is just super, super scary because I'm just like, where are we going, you you know, as a as a country, as an economy to sell expired food and think that, you know, this is the wave. Like, I'm nervous. And I hope that people at home, that you guys just, you know, are aware of this and that you do what you have to do to nip this in the bud. Because I feel like this is how we'll get more sick people and how we will, you know, eventually be in a place that's just not good. The only benefit is cheap food, saving money. That's it. Here it is. Here. Date. NBC's Miguel Almaguer has our report. Shopping for a healthy meal, single mom Davine Bourgeois is at the food bank looking for affordable groceries just past their prime. So what if it's a day or two old or three days past due, it's still very much edible. I think we can lift this. Bourgeois is exactly the customer Doug Rao is looking for. This summer, the former president of Trader Joe's will open a new grocery store that sells expired food for pennies on the dollar. There's a lot of food out there 
that is wholesome and healthy that is just being disposed. Rao says he'll offer fresh produce. This is what I'm looking for. Use either as ingredients or to be able to sell perfectly good so dairy. Here's a, here's a fat free milk. And most other grocery store products at deep, deep discounts. Grocers receive a lot of product that is perfectly sound that has what's called a sell by date or a best by date. They pull that off the shelf right at the day, some do it several days before, and it's, it's being tossed, and that's a crime. According to a recent study, 40% of food produced in this country is dumped in the trash every year. $165 billion worth of edible food tossed out. Those date labels you see on food, sell by, use by, they are actually not federally regulated, and they're not meant to indicate safety. With that in mind, on this lot outside Boston, Rao will open the daily table. His nonprofit store will collect, then sell what other grocers won't. So, yeah, so as you see there, wow. uh, yeah, like they're selling products that are just, are, are produce. <laughs> like to me, that's. That's something that shouldn't be done. Like I said, when things come to the grocery store, they're already five and six days, you know, up, for uprooted from the actual ground or wherever they're they're coming from. So it's like, how fresh is our food to begin with? And then to feel like when it's expired, it's only expired one or two days, we have to become more conscious of the process in which our food is coming from. But yeah, so, you know, people, I really want to hear what you guys have to say about this. This was really, really big when I heard it. And, you know, um, I, I, I look forward to seeing how America feels about this in the upcoming weeks, months, or whatever, not if this actually starts to come into fruition and we have um, grocery stores like this. But we are running out of time, so that is going to be it for our show today. I hope you guys liked it. Please subscribe, like us, comment. We need you. We do this show for you because we want to bring you information that we feel is not as pertinent or, or you know, uh, flowing as freely as it should be. Um, so I'm your host, Chloe Onyx. Thank you for joining us here at Lifestyle Essentials. You guys can find me on Instagram at Chloe Onyx and on Twitter at Chloe Onyx 11. That's C-H-L-O-E-O-N-Y-X. And Erica? And you can find my beauty blog on YouTube at EricaBell89. And you can also follow me on Instagram at ellabella 89 All right, guys. We'll catch you later. Good night. That wasn't bad. That was